Cheadle. I work for the Oklahoma Conservation Commission in the Blue Thumb Water Quality Education Program. And we're excited today to be out on a lovely April day. We've had a lot of rain in Northeast Tulsa, which is where we are. And what we're going to talk to you a little bit about today is the land around you and, that, and how that land responds or those land uses respond to rainfall. If you remember part one of the video of making runoff models, then you remember that we took a model, I mean a bottle, and we transferred it into a little vessel that will hold a piece of land, in this case a prairie, and the bottom of it we have some lawn fabric that allows flow through. So we can learn something about how the earth reacts when rain falls or other precipitation events fall. And what we have here today is we have a riparian forest and we got it from right back here. There's a little stream back here, Coal Creek, and that little stream, and we are in Glenpool, and that little stream has around it some shrubs and trees and grasses and a nice area that's called a riparian zone. Those plants help protect that stream. And, and that's one of the things that we have here. We're going to see how rain reacts when it comes down on a riparian zone, a forested area. Then we have, I have two prairies today, Prairie 1 and Prairie 2. Just because I'm trying to see, I'm kind of doing a little check on myself to see if both of my prairies react the same under watering conditions. And then I have the typical urban or suburban lawn. This is a little area of lawn that I got from... Um, a business on Main Street in downtown Glenpool. Don't tell them I, I took their lawn. But anyway, so we have a little bit of lawn here. And then I have soil from two different construction sites. One has been freshly cleared and they're just beginning to work on it. The other has been eroding for a few weeks. So I have those two construction sites. And then I have something we're all very familiar with, which is the parking lot or highway or sidewalk or, or driveway. And I even have a car to help us make the jump that this is impervious surface, a parking area. And we are going to check and see how, it, how rain reacts when it lands on these different land uses. Now with me today is co-worker Becky Zawalski. Becky, join us, please. And we're actually going to rain on this model. And kind of the point of our model right here is that this is something you can go out and do. You can, you can modify these bottles, you can go out and collect a bit of land, and then you can see what the runoff is like. Becky, would you step right over here? Becky's very agreeable. She is, she too is very interested in what happens when rain falls from the sky and lands on something. Right, Becky? I am, yes. I, I love to know about these things. So Becky, let's see. What I think we'll start with is our forest. Okay. I don't know what your expectation is, but when rain falls on a forest, we're going to kind of check it out and see what happens. So if you are doing this activity and you have several children, I just want to point out, if you have some people with you, you can actually make three opportunities for volunteerism in this. One of them will be doing the job that Becky's going to do right now. Please, Becky, will you hold my forest in your hands? And you're going to hold it kind of like I am, Becky. Okay. You're going to let this bottom area that, that allows flow through. How about like this, with your hands underneath, so that, the, so that our viewing audience will have all of the benefit. And you're going to hold it in a slight tilt. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a vessel to collect any rain that flows on down. And we're going to have a vessel that collects any runoff. Come here, vessel. So let's see what happens when rain falls on a forest. Becky, are you ready? I am ready, Cheryl. All let right. Let it rain. Here comes the rain, and I have a rather large rain container, but I'm gently going to rain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gently raining. So you can see that my rain is falling very, 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 very gently. Is there any runoff? Uh, nothing's coming out of the neck of the bottle, but we've got quite a bit coming through the bottom screen. All right, now, here is my comment about what just happened. And just bear with me, because this is more exciting than you realize at this moment. 
So, our forest, and you can see you've got our trees, our forest pulled water into the soil, and that water then came out in our container. What we just experienced with the rain falling on the forest was we had the soil pull the rain through and all of that water, some of it stayed in the soil to be used by the plants and some of it moved on through into our container where we caught it. And that's what we expect from a natural area like a riparian forest buffer. It pulls in the water, makes it available for plants, and then that water will seep into the earth, make its way slowly into that stream down there. And that's the way a natural rainfall on a forested area like this is going to work. You notice we had no runoff. There was no runoff. Because runoff is, is something that happens, well, under a variety of circumstances, which we will go to next. But when land is left forested in a natural, a natural way like this, when rain lands on it, it does what we expect it to do. And our little demo shows that. So we created this ourselves. We went and borrowed some earth from the riparian zone, and we had a good result with our demonstration. Becky, let's try a different plot of land, shall we? Which one? Well, I don't know. What do you think? Let's do the prairie next. I think we're going to go to prairie. And what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this water. And we're just, just water, so we're pouring it out. And now, we're going to use prairie. And this prairie was also, we're going to we'll, we'll let you know about collecting it. But our prairie right here was a natural prairie. I know that it is mowed and when they bale hay here from it. Doesn't have cattle on it. So those are some of the things I know that this prairie is doing. And oh, we got a little guy that was living in our soil. And another, so that little guy was living in the soil. Here, why don't you put him right back in there and let him go home. See, that's how you show a kindness to a little critter. It was in that soil before, it can go back to that soil now. Becky, if you will hold our prairie. Yes, ma'am. And she is holding it because keep in mind, remember what we said, we have a screen down here, a mesh, so that water can go through if it chooses to. Now, we're gonna rain on our prairie, Becky. Okay. Kaboom, boom, boom. That was thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening. Okay. Raining on our prairie. And I'm pretty pleased, even though Becky is holding our prairie at a tilt so that we're getting some downward movement, we do not have water coming out as runoff. That's kind of nice. But it's amazing because when rain fell on our natural prairie, we have had all of that water was either held in the soil that exists in our model or it went all the way through the earth and then it's in this container. We're going to show this to you. That's clean water, folks. It, that went through a couple of inches of soil and, um, and the plants and the roots and everything. It's not the water, that's, it's not clear like water we would drink, but virt that's pretty much clean water. And so that water that went through the natural prairie did wonderfully. So when you drive around and you see a prairie, and you can know that when rain lands on that, that's probably going to be a really good outcome. Now I'm handing Becky our little model that represents a lawn. And she's got a hold of it. And once again, we have, we have an area there we can rain on and we have the mesh down here where we can get some, some water to go through. And this is a lawn that's been mowed extremely short. It's not a fancy lawn. I don't think anybody's fertilizing it. But let's just see what happens. And Becky's got it at that same slight tilt that she had the prairie and the forest at. So let's see what our outcome is when rain falls from the sky on this little model. So we're getting some rain. Our little lawn is acting pretty good. There we, go. we are starting to get a little bit of runoff. So let's take a look now. Our lawn did pull water through. The soil did hold some of the water, but one of the things that happened is we did start getting runoff. 
And one of the reasons that we got that runoff is typically a lawn that is kept short, those roots are gonna be shorter in the soil. Those roots that are shorter in the soil cannot help the rain to soak in like the prairie and the woodland roots can do so. We did get a very, uh, you know, we got a pretty good result still. It's a, it's a, it's a well-established lawn, but we did end up with a little bit of runoff here. So that's just something to note, that your lawn, unless you are helping to work with your lawn to help it to pull in water, maybe you're mowing a little bit higher, maybe you're using some native species that have deep root systems, those are ways you can help your lawn to have that soak in like a prairie and a woodland has. On here, if, if you think about it, if this was your yard and you were starting to get some runoff, consider where that runoff is gonna go. I know my yard, in, right in front of my house, I have a storm drain. So any excess water from my yard is gonna make its way into that storm drain, into a little stream, and then it's gonna come out eventually in this stream right here, Cold Creek. So just keep in mind that runoff is water that, that we have to be doing a little bit of thinking about. Thank you, Becky, for holding the lawn. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you all have seen some situations in which construction sites have been clearing the earth. So we're gonna talk just a little bit about a construction site that has been freshly cleared. We've had some heavy equipment on here and we have been scraping the earth. And so we're gonna see what happens with our construction site. Becky is once again very, very willingly hanging on to our model. So we got that little tilt about like the others had. Let's see what happens when it rains on a construction site that doesn't have any vegetation. What happens in Oklahoma? What we have going on with this freshly cleared earth is we have created a situation where we have a lot of runoff. The other land types that we had had a lot of water that was able to go through the soil, but this is not healthy soil now. We have cleared it. We have created a situation in which there's not going to be the opportunity for water to actually penetrate through there, and we have almost 100% runoff and our runoff is full of soil particles. Those soil particles, what was good topsoil that would grow things is now just a pollutant in the water. It affects water clarity, it clogs up streams and rivers, it smothers habitat, and there can be other chemicals that stick to these soil particles. Now, that's a situation that's a problem. And so that's what we need to know. We need to understand what happens when we change the surface of the earth. So. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about a construction site that was cleared just a few weeks ago. And this, this has had some time to do a little eroding and some things have been going on, but we're gonna see what happens when rain falls on a site that's already had some rain falling on it. And once again, I collected this just the other day. So we're gonna come in with some rain. In our experience with this construction site, we have had a little water go through. Let me just set that down, baby. Wow! So we've had some water go through, but because our soil structure, we're losing our soil structure because it's not healthy soil, so we had not only just a little water go through, but what did go through carried quite a bit of soil with it, and we had a lot of runoff. And that runoff, even though we were starting to get a crusty layer on top. We still picked up some sediment, so we have more runoff than is healthy, and it's very loaded with sediment. So when we have a construction site, and you know, this could be farmland as well. If we're using some of those traditional agricultural methods that do not include no-till, do not include using cover crop, we can have situations like this in the agricultural community as well, like both of these two sites because honestly, the earth wants to be covered. It wants a nice plant base to, to cover it. What we're gonna show you now is one final land type that we're gonna all be familiar with. This is pavement, like a highway, like a shopping area parking lot, like your driveway, like a sidewalk. So, and I have a little car, because a lot of times when you find pavement, you find the ability to park, stop, things like that. 
Becky is going to once again hold our parking lot and we're going to see what happens when the rain falls. We've got no opportunity for soak in with our parking lot, so we just have runoff. In the case today, I want you to see that our runoff is very clear and clean. But let me ask you this, if our runoff was a parking lot with vehicles dripping on it with um, bits of tire, brake fluid, oil, chemicals, some kid running across the parking lot falls and skins their knees and spills their pop, there's just lots of things, that's a good thing, thank you, there are a lot of things that get on pavement and even if there's nothing to, that's polluting the water, just the very fact that we have changed the hydrology of an area with all of that what we call impervious surface, no opportunity for rain to soak in. We've changed the way water moves towards our streams and rivers and we can have some impacts we, don't ever, we didn't ever intend to have in the way the stream is impacted by those huge flushes of water because when the rain hits that, that impervious surface, that pavement, that concrete, it moves fast towards maybe the nearest storm drain, towards maybe the nearest ditch, and we can see lots of damages that result from that way that water is moving. And if it's a hot summer day and you're getting that big rain, then you have a temperature issue as well of the temperature of the water going up as you get your flushes going into it. I tried to make some little models like this. I think that one of the things you, it would help you to understand, and if you're working with children, to, it would help them to understand, is to be aware of your surroundings and to think about the way we people use the earth, the surface of the earth, and what can some things that we can, what are some things we can do that helps the earth to mimic the natural processes of forests and prairies, the way we manage our lawn, the way we um, accomplish agriculture and, and using conservation planning, the way that construction sites clear the land and, and try to keep that soil from eroding and getting into our streams and rivers, and the various places where we have this impervious pavement. This, this is a, an activity that helps us to be aware of what we people, how we impact the earth around us. And hopefully it helps us to think a little more deeply. But really, all of us can use information like this to be better informed citizens, because a part of citizenship is, is understanding our world and how to protect it and how to have strong, healthy, resilient communities. So that's what I would leave you with. And in, if you have any questions about doing a model like this and making it work, because I have had this work perfectly. I've had days when it didn't work quite as well. I've had times when if we get it really saturated, it fails to perform as well. So that, you know, it's a, it's a tiny, view of a piece of the earth and how the earth works with rainfall but it can work really well it can be an effective educational tool to help people better understand our place in protecting our one and only earth